Hello. Nathan. Sorry to keep you waiting. My editor. Where were we? Hey, um, you, you were asking about the guy, the, the one that went back there, the, the guy that, um... Ah, that's right. And did you know him well? No, not really. He worked maintenance on our trucks. He was employed by IDAP? No, no, nothing like that. I, I'm, I mean, he just helped us out a few times. Off the book stuff. Guy was a local mechanic. Family business type thing, you know? I see. I remember he had a place on the edge of town, not far from our setup. We chat from time to time. He's a nice guy, friendly. And do you know where he was going that day? To the church. He was going to church? No, no, don't get me wrong. I mean, that place had been abandoned for almost a year. But he was looking for his brother. At the church? Yeah, there'd been reports of, uh, you know, pretty brutal firefight up there. He'd heard his brother might have been caught up in it. Sure, but, and I'm not quite clear on this, was his brother still alive? Honestly, I don't know. I don't think he knew either. It seems like he was on his way to find out. So, his brother, he was in the army? Uh, yes and no. It's, it's complicated. You gotta remember it was pretty chaotic back then. Mm, of course. Um, okay, let's back up a bit. Sure. What complicated the situation? Just the history of it all. His brother had been a recruit in the Altus Armed Forces, boot camp, basic training, you know. Well, this is back when NATO was still keeping the peace. But after U.S. forces pulled out, apparently he deserted. Do you know why? No, just, I know they argued a lot about it. Well, this is the Laws of War DLC. It's pretty interesting so far. It's taking a take on kind of humanitarian aid and not just firefights and battles and such. So I thought I'd give it a try, see how it is, and uh, show you guys some raw gameplay of it. I think I'm supposed to make my way up to this church. Dang. Hello? Hey, speaking. Hey, sorry about that. Call must have dropped. The network out here is garbage. No problem. It's understandable. Are you still driving? Yeah. We're not at the town yet. Hold on a sec. Andy, we almost there. We're, uh, a little ways out. Oh, and we need to make one quick stop, too. Thanks, bud. So, um, where'd we get cut off? Um, you were telling me about the church. The landmine? The accident. Right, yeah. Well, of course, a civilian casualty like that, particularly, you know, at a church, I guess it kind of refocused our attention here. Had IDAP been particularly active in the area? Yeah. I mean, our project had a handful of camps spread across the country. But yeah, I was in the town itself for a few months. It's all different now, though. How so? Well, for one thing, IDAP used to be based right in the heart of Wario Castro. Of course, this was all pre-war. I remember, at that time, the local military maintained a checkpoint on the outskirts of town. That was understandable. I mean, the whole area was a kind of wild west. Big mashup of civilian and guerrilla infrastructure. Disaster waiting to happen, really. I don't know. It's strange to see our camp based there now. Hey, sorry about the holdup. We're on the way now. All right, thanks, Andy. So, 
And what's your role there today? Now, uh, in general, the provision of aid. There was a lot of damage. IDAP fills the gap. Drinking water, basic medicine, post-war cleanup, in other words. Mm. And on the ground, how does that translate to your work? It's a mixed bag, like today. Part demining, part unexploded ordnance disposal. I see. Heads up, Mac. Almost there. Got it. I'm sorry about that. We're arriving now. Give me a sec. All right, Mac. That's your stuff all laid out here. Hold on just a sec, Kate. I need to get set up. Take your time. This is interesting. All right, then. You got everything? Detector working? You, uh, remember how to switch it on, right? Okay. Yeah, I got it, Andy. Then you're all set. Thanks. So, for now, I'll just make a note of where the mines are. Yeah. Take it slow, Mac. We'll let the Bobcat do the heavy lifting later. So there's NATO here. And they're helping out with stuff, it looks like. And... These guys are also NATO. So I'm supposed to go up here? I don't think I'll just, like, walk onto a mine. Yep, I saw it! Okay. Hey, sorry. I forgot to mention. The demining toolkit? Totally forgot to pack it up this morning. That's no big deal. We're just locating the mines for now. Just keep me posted. I need to go up to close to it. Are you free to talk, Nathan? Sure. For now, I'm just sweeping the road for mines, getting a lay of the land, you know? The detector lets us see what we're dealing with here. I can, I can work in chat. Okay, did I did I mark this one accurately? Okay, yeah. The dot's just a little bit different from where the the kind of red glow is. Oh, this is spooky. Oh man. <laughs> oh wait, are there two mines back here then? Oh yeah, there's two. Okay. There are two. Question. What happens when you do find a landmine? Ordinarily, we disarm it, but today, small oversight, we haven't got all our gear right now. Oh, it's on the way, I hope. Yeah, it's all good. Oh, this is weird. Uh, <laughs> this is scary. I don't know if I'm like supposed to crouch walk to approach them. This one's hidden. There it is. Okay. Man, these are like clustered everywhere. So, since the war's now over, has your own role changed at all? Yeah, I guess so. Now I'm almost entirely focused on EOD and UXO. And that's something you did in the military, too. Yeah. That's the thing about mines. War or not, win, lose, they don't go away. This is interesting, though. Like, the, um... The scripting that must have gone on in that part where he, like, had a flashback, that had to be some crazy scripting. I've never seen anything like that. So, I, I can already tell, like, this campaign, a lot more effort went into just the scripting of this, I feel like. Which is a good thing. Really, really good thing. Like, I'm, I'm already a, having a pretty positive feeling about this campaign. That's something pretty different. Andy, I'm at the barricade. Cool. And the road? Yeah, it's what we thought. A dozen or so APs. Nothing the old bobcat can't handle. I like this guy's voice actor, too. And even the lady's voice actor. They did a good job. What is that? Hold space to remember? What? The church, where the mines are... It's sealed off now. By IDAP? No, NATO. They lost some guys there in the firefight. One of their EODs is helping clear the place. But, uh, he's not exactly moving quickly. Hey, Andy. Yep, what's up? What's the deal with the church? Can we get in or what? Sorry, Mac. No dice. 
NATO's got first dibs. They're bringing their boys home. Bag and tag. Best leave them to it. Uh, come back later. It's crazy. That's some. Cr I, I don't understand how they do that. That's a really crazy script that they've got. It works well. Oh gosh, did not mean to sprint over here. Tripwire mine. That's a NATO tripwire mine. I think. Oh gosh, where is it? Oh man, where is it? Okay, so it's in the next room. I'm. I'm uh. This is spooky. So it's right there. Oh man, this is. Oh, it's a tripwire. Oh my gosh. Oh no, it's right there. Can I? I guess this is the. It says it's over there to the right, but it's here to the left. I can't. Oh, okay. There we go. I marked it. Oh my gosh, man. <laughs> oh, I was about to walk through to see if it was on the other side of that door. Hold space to play the peacekeeper. There's some old boxes here and there. I don't. Yeah. It was NATO that helped bring them in. Actually, it was one hell of a supply drop. So, the supply drop, this was when exactly? Right around the time we saw the ceasefire starting to break down. Must be more than a year ago now. <laughs> so, at that time, your camp was in the center of town? Yeah, things were getting pretty desperate, though. I remember we hadn't been resupplied in months. No food, water, medicine. We were used to issues with logistics, but I don't know. In the end, it got so bad, U.S. forces prepared an airdrop. Not an easy task, considering, but those crates, they really were life and death. That's why we needed somebody on the ground. Someone to make sure they came down okay. And who was that? It was this guy. A guy named Adams. Part of the NATO peacekeeping force. Close friend of mine, actually. Ooh, AF is sitting right there. That's crazy. That's so cool, though. It was though. his job to locate a drop zone. In the mountains? Mm-hmm. Needless to say, High Command always had ideas, but they weren't always good. Plus, no one had planned for those crosswinds flaring up. But our supplies were already in the air. He made a spur-of-the-moment decision? Pretty much, yeah. Although he described it with more, um, direct language. <laughs> Adam, he went out alone. From the way he told it, he may as well have. No, he went along with some new recruits, local bunch. It was his job to show them the ropes. Something I'm not quite clear on. Why didn't IDAP transport the aid themselves? There must have been a reason. Yeah, there was. A couple of weeks previously, guerrillas had ambushed a convoy. It was some dissident group out to sabotage the peace talks in Karbala. Anyway, NATO intervened and the whole thing just blew up. A checkpoint was hit. Protesters were fired upon at the MOD. Yes, I, I, we were there. AAN. Then you know how bad it got. Our movements were limited by the government. Exactly. And convincing anybody to reassign troops, to escort NGOs, just a total non-starter. Okay, you know what? Just to, uh... Or actually... I was about to just say, oh, I'll just walk it, but getting back up this hill is also going to be a pain in the butt, so <laughs> might as well just do this. Go all the way down the strider. Now, Adams wasn't stupid. He knew the drop zones he'd been given were flawed. Information was always getting to the enemy. You're saying they were compromised? Uh, by the guerrillas, I mean. I don't know for sure, but Adams was the kind of guy to take extra precautions. One thing I don't understand... What were they doing there, all the way up in the mountains? The town, Oreo Castro, this place has historic ties with the guerrillas. For years, people here would provide them with food, water. I see. The government responded by draining the swamp. And that involved sending soldiers? Yeah, coin ops. Adams and his guys were there to remind them of their R2P. 
Just a sec. I'm getting a bit lost in the lingo here. Hmm? Oh, gotcha. Uh, R2P is their responsibility to protect. Counterinsurgency can get real messy real quick. He was in charge of training. Laws of armed conflict, that kind of thing. So, these crates, were there much for them? No, just four. One contained medicine, another fresh drinking water, the rest were packed with rice or grain. Adam said to inspect each one individually. Later, we'd arrange collection. Oh. Okay. There's one air chop up here. Oh, is it? I think it's armoring right now. I think it's getting armored. I think it's up in the sky. One sec. Hop out. Oh, yep. <laughs> uh. Oh. Oh. Hopefully this drops. Okay, there it goes. Yay. Nice, nice. Got some, Thankfully, got some rice. The rice seemed okay. I forgot you can get in a Strider's driver's seat from both sides because it is a center seat car. It's kind of a cool thing. It's nice in combat where you don't have to worry about, oh, I need to get into left side because left side's driver's seat. You can just be like, I can get whatever side. Up, down, left, right. Anyway. It wasn't uncommon for the sacks of grain to split on impact, but that time we got lucky. He didn't lose a single one. Ooh. We're good with our rice grain sacks. Oh gosh. Okay, calm down, Strider. Don't you dare armor on me. The medical items, you can imagine how pleased we were to see those arrive. So they landed safely? Yeah. Yeah, they were fine. It's nice. Okay. Gotta get up to the last one up here. Why is the Strider so slow? Come on. Get up the hill, you special potato. What? Oh, man. Okay. No, the thing with airdrops, they're not exactly subtle. Uh, Smoke, disembark. The noise of the plane, those bright green parachutes, they're going to get you noticed. And when you're in the middle of bandit country, that's a problem. Where are we taking fire from? That? What is that? Is that an off-road? How far is that? That's like 300 meters, I'm guessing. 300. Oh my gosh, wow. Yeah, hello. Oh, where that grenade landed. Crap. Dang. Where's this last airdrop? Where'd it go? Oh, it's up on the hill. Great. We have to kill this thing then. Okay, one sec. All of you. Move 200 meters. Right. Move to the right. Kind of be my bait. Oh, they took out a striker or strider too. I'm too. I'm too used to squad, so I say striker now. Uh. All right. Tactical. 75 meters. Right up ahead. Car. 75 meters. Front. Engage it. Engage it. Engage it. There we go. Nice. Here's this little. Oh man. Oh, this is great. This is just great. Oh. Oh, I think he's dead. I think he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. Where's the other... Like, there was a technical, right? I thought I'd seen a technical. Was there only one truck? Oh, yeah, there's the house. Okay, I'm gonna Move 75 the meters! Front! Solid copy. This is the road right here that, uh... Okay, that, that's the technical. It's... Oh, crap! Okay. It's still down there. And I am not able to run that far. I don't know what I'm carrying. So I really don't have much on me, yet the stamina is still wrecking me right now. Sniper! 
Got a sniper. That's great. Okay, one sec. Oh, he got the sniper. Oh, man. Yeah, if, if we're fighting a uh, technical that we can't even see. Is it behind us? Oh, my gosh. Gosh, dang. I don't even know where I'm getting hit from. It's a lot more troublesome than uh, the narrator guy was saying. Oh my gosh, is he going to destroy this house? Oh gosh. Where was that fire from? Where's the techie? Oh gosh. <laughs> there we go, got him. I steal your car, Grand Theft Auto style. I guess we'll head back into town. I feel like I've defended, but it's not giving me a new task, so I don't really, I don't know, let me see, let's see. This might be armory, arma, arma-ing at the moment, because I'm not exactly sure that we killed everybody, because it's just not giving me a new task. But nobody's pushing my position, so... This is like, kind of like, I guess, the border sign of like, hey, you're entering our territory. But, uh... Yeah, I think I killed everybody. Just kidding. Just kidding. Auto rifleman down there. All I have is a white flare. I think he's dead. Just kidding. Not dead yet. I hit him like twice. The gorillas attack. There we go. Yeah, from what I heard, it was pretty intense. I was kind of dumb. I the numbers, but maybe six or seven were killed. And what happened when the supplies had been secured? Adams would fire a flare. Back at the camp, of course, we'd heard all the gunfire, but that flare, when we spotted it, I don't know, felt like finding a moment of hope or something. Sure. I can only imagine. And thanks for sharing. It puts a, I don't know, a human perspective on my work. Speaking of which, your friend, do you think he'd be willing to contribute further? Even, you know, off the record. What with the topic of my article, having an expert, an instructor on the laws of war. Look, I'm sorry. I, I know he'd help out however he could, but listen, he died on Stratus. A year and a bit later. Landmine. Mac, heads up. Bobcat's on the move. That's fine, thanks, Andy. Hey, <laughs> keep here with me. Bobcat just does it's not care. It's a little noisy here. We gotta clear out some mines. Take your time. Just let me know when you can talk. <laughs> I don't care about anything, cause I'm Bobcat. I'm gonna go run after him. This looks fun. Bet you wish we had one of those in Pakistan, huh? I gotta admit, that's 60 tons of getting shit done. <laughs> oh, by the way, while you were busy chatting to, uh, well, whoever that is that isn't your wife... I told you, Andy, <laughs> she's a journalist. Get to the point. Yeah, yeah, well, anyway, I assembled the demining drones. Both of them. Uh, well, yeah. They're by the van. So, these are new as well. These demining drones. It's a totally different UAV terminal. Alright, got the terminal. Cool. So just connect it to a drone and, yeah, take control. Okay. Let's try out these new drones. 
You got it? Looking good. So, you're gonna want to use the auto hover mode. Switch it on whenever you need to stay in one place. Auto hover, right. I'll arm the explosives once you've reached the minefield. This is pretty cool. It's a nice looking drone. A lot cooler than the originals. But I guess it's a more heavy load sort of thing so that it has to have a lot more rotors and such. How high do I want to be above these things? Heads up. Enabling charges. Okay. Okay, now. The bombs. You only got four. Release one and it'll drop straight down. Simple physics. If you run out, fly over to the van. There's plenty spare. Thanks. I don't know exactly how to use this. Oh, I guess, okay, that's where it's gonna drop. Okay. I'm gonna drop one here. Having fun there? Making things go boom, you know it. Uh. Oh! This demining charges pack quite a punch. What's in them? 500 grams of Crovex water gel, baby. Okay, I wanna get those two right there as well. I also like how the uh, the drone is a lot less annoying than the other drones. It has a lot better of a sound effect, and also being in the camera deafens the sound effect, which is really nice. Because if you're if you're I mean if you're sitting here watching and controlling a drone, you're not going to be hearing it. You know what I mean? That's a weird sound that that thing makes. Oh man. Yeah, that's pretty useful. Yeah, you know what it might be? It might be like a warning device. Like it might be making a really, really high pitched noise and also having a yellow cloud just so you could, just so you're like warning people. I don't know if this is a realistic thing. That's what I guess it would be for. The mines on the road caught them off guard. Immobilized their armor. They took heavy casualties from mortar and MG emplacements too. Some even blamed the army command. Said they gifted the enemy time to organize. The leaflets. Right. It was a tough call. Complying with the laws of war, it's got a price. So this has got a laser designator. Man, I like the sound of these memories. It's a cool memory Hello. sound. How'd you get here? Another find. Mm-hmm. Laser designator. Anything special forces would use to call in an airstrike. Oh, interesting. Actually, the airstrike on the town, the details of that are fuzzy. Do you happen to remember it well? The airstrike, I mean. Yeah. October 13th. Cluster bomb. Town was shook up pretty bad. The army just wasn't able to capture the place. And Colonel Arcanteros, he did not tolerate failure. So he asked foreign powers to intervene. Come in, break the guerrillas' resolve. Right. And the evidence in the commission report, doesn't it point to Caesar? Whoa. Yeah. But truth can be the first casualty of war. Sure, but didn't somebody witness them in action? From a distance, yeah. Though he wasn't exactly what you'd call reliable. The guy was a goat herd. Barely spoke any English. That was not in the report I read. It never is. Still, he did say they came down by parachute. And that, at least, was corroborated by multiple sources. Oh, wow. So we're like some Spec Ops CSAT team now. Everything's redacted, even our names. Super Spec Ops. Super Stealth. What guns Games do we have? Operatives, then. They moved in on the castle. Yep. Must have been a fire team at least. Copy that. Strike aircraft on the way. Out. Do you know why the government signed off on such a heavy handed response? A cluster bomb? That's rather indiscriminate. Even if it was laser guided. Sure, I mean, with a designator, you just switch it on, aim it at, well, whatever. 
The idea is that you remain in place, you know, keep the laser on target. But even if it's done perfectly, a lot of uncontrolled variables. One of our doctors was out on the front line with medical supplies. Wait, he wasn't at the church? No, he was out in the open. The town just seemed to explode. Buildings were burning for days. And the spotter, he just disappeared? Yeah. Last seen leaving the castle, heading west. Let's talk about Idap's doctor. You said he was on his way to the church. Did he make it there? No. He, uh, he lost his life. Killed trying to save others. I understand that CSAT denied any involvement. Yeah, who knows? Maybe with good reason. Oh? Like, I don't know. There were shell casings found at the castle. NATO mill spec. Okay, so then either they were supplying the guerrillas or... Or they were there. Maybe trying to win back the government support. Maybe... What? What? I don't know. What? It was NATO? It was NATO? Seriously? It was NATO that dropped the strike. That killed, like, medics and, and rebels. And then it was blamed on CSAT? So, this firefight, it was... Just let me check the calendar. Eight days ago? Yeah, day of the NATO invasion. After the flashpoint on Stratus, there was chaos. Nobody seemed to know what to do. Finally, NATO got their act together and launched an assault on the Altus mainland. And CSAT? Caught off guard by the whole thing. They were there to fight guerrillas and not start World War III. So when CSAT dropped their support, government forces panicked. They were on the back foot. Needed to regroup. Major Gabras was put in charge, but it was a tall order. Gabras tried to fortify their position in the northwest, but it was a risk, and he ended up cut off. The guerrillas, they didn't hesitate. Stormed his position, sent the survivors running. Okay, and if you don't mind me asking, how did you come to hear this? Costas Dimitri, the lieutenant, and the major's adjutant. Along with Gabras, the two of them were trying to make it to a helicopter. They were trying to make it. Mm -hmm. NATO took it out. Wow. Tank buster. At that point, they had air supremacy. Caught it on the hop. Did they have another plan? Not exactly, but they decided to make a stand at the church. Alexis, alongside a bunch of guerrillas, they were approaching from the north. At the same time, a NATO squad was moving in on their position. They'd been outnumbered ten to one. The graveyard, it would have made for quite a kill zone. Put a mine dispenser here. And then, I'm gonna touch it off. Oh! <laughs> That is insane. Okay, well now we're going to plop one over here as well. Uh, I don't know how we're going to get out of here safely. Plop one here. And hope that it doesn't go too far to the right. I'm going to watch the right side. Okay, yeah, we can get out. Mines and sat tight, waiting for the enemy. Facing those kind of odds, it was the only thing they could do. 
Oh. Gosh dang. Come on, mines. None of the mines are going off. Oh gosh, reload, 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 reload. Please don't die. Okay. There's seven rounds left. Come on. Nice. Look, this is this is armor combat. He just pulled an armor, just firing fully auto into nothing. Second helo was inbound. They dispatched another. Yeah, it was a risk, sure, but government forces were in free fall and the major was important. They just had to get to a different LZ before reinforcements turned up and cut them off. And Costas, how did your paths cross? I'm still a little unclear. Oh, Lieutenant Dimitriou. He came to IDAP, to our camp. The AAF provided us with information on the mines. The guy was a wreck, but his training had kicked in. He documented the minefields, well, as best he could. But for Marcos, it was already too late. He'd already found one, poor bastard. And the wounded? Did Costas have anything to say about them? Off the record. Pen's leaving paper. An hour after the firefight, a NATO response team arrived. They found a massacre. Evidence of summary executions, war crimes. There's talk Costas might have been responsible. Okay. You've mentioned Alexis was with the guerrillas. Do you know what became of him? Um, he was killed. Andy, my colleague here, he said a NATO response team found his body. Apparently it looked like an execution. I don't know, the whole thing's a mess, but uh, maybe it's something you'd want to follow up on. Honestly, Nathan, all this information, it's a godsend. You've given me loads to work with here. It's nothing, really. Now, there's just one last question I'd like to ask you. It's subjective, so take your time. Sure. Fire away. In your opinion, who's most to blame for all the suffering in Aurea Castro? Oh. NATO? The guerrillas? CSAT? The Altis Armed Forces? Or, I don't know, something else? Ooh. Wow. This is cool. See, this is the stuff that I'm, like, impressed by. So, these leaflets, they were a warning to the town. Yeah, they confirmed the offensive, but maybe they were just sick of all the extra paperwork. These leaflets, they were dropped maybe a day before the fighting began. These vehicles, I suppose all of them were taken without consent. Well, yeah, given the circumstances, the owners couldn't exactly refuse. Wow, okay, so it's going to give an explanation of the bad things that every single faction did. Do you think the Major's death had any impact on the war, despite the NATO invasion being a disaster? Maybe. Certainly the government had become frustrated with NATO and vice versa. But the others said they just we think so. didn't have the guts for it. NATO's invasion of all couldn't do what needed to be done. I don't know how they got it so. Do you happen to remember it well? The airstrike, I mean. Yeah. October 13th. Cluster bomb. Town was shook up pretty bad. The army just wasn't able to capture the place. And Colonel Arcanteros, he. They scattered the mines and sat tight. 
waiting for the enemy. I, I think I think the worst the, the worst crime of it all though is not just the cluster mines. I think the cluster mines, you know, that was their last ditch effort. That was the way that they had to survive that situation. But CSAT did not need to drop the bomb. NATO, they helped. They didn't help enough though, and they, you know, they were seen as people who could have done more. Fia, they stole cars and they made a barricade. Yeah. And they made their own town a target. But also, that was a defense as well. You've seen things from both sides. Yeah. I mean, CSATs, I feel like. I don't know. I'm going to say this is war. No one can really be held accountable. Yeah. I'd have to say. You know, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't think it's quite so black and white. It's more black and gray. Hell, gray and gray, you know? No one side can be held accountable for the bloodshed here. No one action got us where we are now. I don't know. What can we do? Just double down on our efforts. Heal the wounds. And the folks here in Oreo Castro, they're the ones that have suffered. This is the reality. This is war.